Here's your wrestling news for October 15th, 2022. And we're kicking off with SmackDown as the biggest thing going into tonight's show was the buzz around Bray Wyatt as fans had been informed he would be appearing. Sure enough, Wyatt closed out SmackDown with his most mesmerizing promo, and given his years as The Fiend and his work in the Firefly Funhouse, that's saying something. A mix of reality and fiction, Wyatt thanked the fans for their support, and it seemed like he was breaking character as he made his entrance, which uses a theme from Code Orange, who were responsible for the Fiend version of his Live in Fear theme. This genuine, heartwarming moment also plays into Bray Wyatt's new character, which seems to be darker than before, and implies that Bray will be dealing with dual personalities going forward. The promo ended on a cliffhanger, as a figure in the mask that Wyatt wore at Extreme Rules showed up on the Titantron, taking everyone by surprise. This twist certainly adds credence to the idea that Bray will be dealing with different personalities going forward, though it remains to be seen if this is more than a one-off character appearance. Bray Wyatt is just one personality and the other is something far more sinister than the man fans already know can be dark. The fact that there were more questions than answers means that WWE got Bray Wyatt's segment this week exactly perfect, a phrase we may have to get used to hearing. What did you make to Wyatt's return to SmackDown after over a year though? Sound off in the comments. Last month, Malachi Black announced that he was taking a break from AEW and many at the time thought that he was leaving the company. Black hasn't been seen on AEW programming since his announcement, which has come at a time when WWE have been eager to re-sign former superstars. Given that Black was a big deal in NXT, it makes sense that Triple H would want him back, and WWE even has a plan in place for the Dutch wrestler. In the Wrestling Observer newsletter, it was reported that there have been talks of Black joining the Wyatt Six stable, which is rumored to be WWE's long-term goal for the recently returned Bray Wyatt. According to sources, Wyatt is the number one concern right now, and WWE want him and his Wyatt Six group to be on par with the Bloodline, hence their desire to bring back Black. Black is considered a smart fit for the group, given that he has a dark character himself, and that Triple H knows how he works and can use his skills much better than Vince McMahon ever did. At this time, talks are ongoing between the two sides, though nothing conclusive has been reached at this time. While Black has said that his hiatus from AEW isn't permanent, many don't buy this claim given how vague the Dutch wrestler has been regarding his future plans. As for other members of the Wyatt Six, names being suggested by fans include Liv Morgan, Alexa Bliss, Grayson Waller, and Joe Gacy, though Black is the only name we know WWE has spoken to about the idea. After over a year with AEW and no titles or accolades to his name, it may be time for Black to try his hand as part of the Wyatt Six. But what do you think? Should he return to WWE or stick with Tony Khan? Let us know in the comments. More from SmackDown as for the first time, Jay Uso actually helped Sami Zayn pick up the win as the Canadian got the W over Kofi Kingston. After months of teases of conflict between the two, this was a surprising finish, but helping Sami is what Jay had been instructed to do by Roman Reigns. Unfortunately for Jay, he wasn't acknowledged for being a team player, with Zayn not realizing he was helped, and Solo Sokoa saying he was watching Zayn, not Jay. This left Jay perplexed, as while he's being treated as an unreliable hothead by the bloodline, he was completely in the right. This new layer will only add to the tensions between Jay and the rest of the group, and with a solo face turn teased, these are interesting times for Jay Uso. Since making his main roster debut in 2016, Happy Corbin has undergone several gimmicks, ranging from being king of the ring to destitute and begging for spare change. Corbin has never been afraid to commit to a new character, and something different may be in the pipelines for the now former US champion. During an interview on the Johnny Dare Morning Show, Corbin spoke about Triple H, WWE's head of creative, and teased something edgier is coming his way. He's a guy who, when I came into NXT, he was a guy who really grabbed onto me and helped develop me and create who I was. My first entrance, he brought that whole motorcycle vibe, that drudgy rock music where I walked in and I had spotlights over my head, that was all his vision. It's cool to have him back because he has now kind of taken what I've been doing and going, how do we put more edge back on you? How do we make you a little more badass again? That feels good to have that. It was in late August that, after losing a match with Shinsuke Nakamura, Corbin was approached by someone in a white limousine believed to be John Bradshaw Layfield. That show also marked Corbin's most recent match on WWE TV, 
and we'll have to see if JBL can bring an edgier side out to the former King of the Ring. During this week's AEW Dynamite from Toronto, Canada's very own Sean Spears returned to TV after a lengthy hiatus. Spears' return marked his first appearance since losing a steel cage match to Wardlow in May, and he had a very good reason for his time off. Following last night's rampage, Spears explained to the Toronto audience that his mother's untimely death was the reason for his time off. Spears said that once his wife Cassie Lee was pregnant, his mother was the first person they told, as he was very close with his now sadly deceased parent. Spears' return this week also marked the return of his Perfect 10 gimmick, which he used during his time as Ty Dillinger in WWE. While Spears sided with MJF against Wardlow earlier this year, a lot has changed since May, and it'll be interesting to see where he fits in with the current AEW. During this week's SmackDown, in his third consecutive appearance on main roster programming, Triple H was seen speaking to Rey Mysterio, who wasn't pleased at all. Telling the game that he didn't want to face his son Dominic in the ring, Rey threatened to say those two infamous words, I quit, but an agreement was quickly reached. Rather than leave WWE, Rey has been moved to SmackDown, but the reasons for the change aren't just for show. According to sources within WWE, the idea of distancing Rey and Dominic have been in motion for some time, as many feel that the younger Mysterio has been pushed too far and too soon, thanks to his father. WWE reportedly teased signing Dominic as a way to get Rey to re-sign with them, and the young superstar was fast-tracked to the main roster when he could have benefited from some time in NXT. Being with the Judgment Day has improved Dominic's skills both in the ring and on the mic, but important names in WWE have argued that Dominic has to eventually be known for himself instead of just being known as Rey's son. Separating the two is doing exactly that, but this doesn't mean we've seen the last of the Mysterios sharing the screen. While many in WWE have argued that some distance between them is the right idea, the current plan is for Rey and Dominic to face off at WrestleMania 39 in California. Of course, WrestleMania is just under six months away, so WWE has decided to split the two and put the feud on hiatus. After all, there's no way this story could continue for another six months without Rey and Dominic facing off one-on-one, -on -one, and having the match before Mania would mean their collision in the Mysterio's home state would be less impressive. While many may feel that this is an underwhelming end to the feud, it isn't the end at all, but just a pause in the story which will culminate next year at SoFi Stadium. Are you on board with Rey vs. Dominic at WrestleMania, or are you tired of seeing this feud? Let us know below! It was also during this week's SmackDown that Liv Morgan made it clear that her title loss at Extreme Rules is nothing to joke about, destroying Sonya Deville in a backstage brawl. During an interview with Kayla Braxton, Deville took digs at Morgan for her loss to Ronda Rousey and earned a ferocious attack by Morgan. Sending Deville through a table, Morgan hit a huge senton to end a very impressive segment on the show. After Liv Morgan lost the SmackDown Women's Championship at Extreme Rules, WWE uploaded a video in which the former champ was in what was described as a dark place. WWE and Morgan are certainly teasing the adaptation of a new, darker character, which could be huge for the young superstar. As for DeVille, she's had her hands full as of late, as she appeared on this week's NXT and will face Alba Fire next week, ahead of Fire challenging Mandy Rose for the NXT Women's title. As for Morgan, there have been rumors that she will be Sister Abigail in the Wyatt Six faction, but what do you think should be next for the former women's champion? It's no secret that Liv is a huge horror movie fan, with some of her in-ring attires being based on iconic horror roles, and she will soon be appearing in the Chucky TV series. Fans won't have to wait long to see Liv on the show, as she'll be in the episode Death on Denial, which is set to air on October 26th. The announcement spot teased that Morgan will become a victim of Chucky, something she's always wanted to play, and after dressing up like the killer doll on WWE TV, Morgan will soon get to go face to plastic face with Chucky himself. Over to AEW now, as the past few months haven't exactly been easy for those in the company. There's been multiple fights backstage in recent months, and several talents have teased wanting to leave AEW, something that Tony Khan has made clear won't happen. Khan has said that he will not be releasing any talent who want to leave, as he does not want them going to WWE, which is a bad call by the AEW president, according to EC3. Speaking to the Wrestling Outlaws, EC3 said Khan has cursed talent by keeping them in AEW if they want to leave. If money mattered, which it does to 98% of us, Andrade'd be gone. 
You don't want to be here? Good. I don't want you here. I don't want anyone here because guess what? For the price of one of you, I can get seven guys that are just as talented and twice as hungry, so go kick rocks, buddy. But no, money doesn't matter and it's almost, it's a curse. It's a curse to the company because they can just outspend bad mistake after bad mistake after poor decision after bad leadership and bad morality. EC3 knows what it's like to want out, as he's gone on record saying he was eager to leave WWE when it became apparent his main roster run wasn't working out. At a time when WWE's product is improving, something Khan himself has admitted to, problems within AEW is something TK can't afford, but these are issues that he, according to EC3 at least, is bringing on himself. On this week's Raw, Brock Lesnar returned to TV to attack Bobby Lashley in The Beast's first appearance since SummerSlam. It was confirmed last night that Lesnar will be on next week's Raw in Oklahoma City, likely to make the rumored match between himself and Lashley for Crown Jewel official. Next week's Raw will also see new US champion Seth Rollins make his first title defense against someone he knows all too well, Matt Riddle. Raw will also mark the return of Elias, Dexter Loomis faces The Miz, and an appearance by Cora Jade. And there will be plenty more to fill the three hours on next week's Raw. Raw isn't the only show with big plans as plenty has been announced for next week's SmackDown. It's been announced that Logan Paul will be on next week's SmackDown ahead of challenging undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel. In addition to that, Dakota Kai and Io Sky will put their WWE Women's Tag Team Championships on the line against Raquel Rodriguez and Shotzi Blackheart as Rodriguez hopes to become a two-time champion. Liv Morgan will take on Sonya Deville next week after the former SmackDown Women's Champion attacked Deville last night and put her through a table, and we'll have to see what else is added to the card. And we're ending with WWE's commentary team shakeup, as Booker T is calling the action on NXT, but the two-time Hall of Famer may not be behind the desk for long. During his Hall of Fame show, Booker said that Barrett could be back with NXT in three months, at which point the former WCW champion would be likely removed from the team. Booker went on to discuss Pat McAfee, who is commentating on SmackDown but isn't right now due to his commitments to ESPN's College Game Day. The belief is that when that project is finished, McAfee will return to SmackDown, Barrett will go back to NXT, and Booker, who has no interest in being part of a three-man team, will be out of the role. Booker did joke that he'll fight for a pay raise in three months' time if WWE does have to choose between him and Barrett, but any fans of Booker's commentary should enjoy it while it lasts. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.